Hi, I'm Kathy Kelly for Red Carpet Report. And you might think we're in Kansas City, but we are not. We are on set of Switched at Birth in Santa Clarita, California. We're going to be talking to some of the stars about season three. We are here with Katie LeClaire. And Katie, okay, before we talk about Switched at Birth, <laughs> have to talk about your wedding. So exciting. I'm so excited. <laughs> I, my mom keeps calling me and telling me, hey, babe, do you know there's like 80 days? And I go, mother, I thought you loved me. Like, why do you feel like you have to stress me out to the max right now? Yeah. There's a lot of planning. Yeah. Weddings are stressful. And you started planning while you were kind of still filming. So how do you balance everything? I would not be able to do what I'm doing if I didn't have a wedding planner. Really? Um, no, at all, not at all. No. <laughs> um, Armorology Weddings are, is my wedding planner and they are amazing. And we correspond literally every single day. And like, I could not, I could, I couldn't do it. Yeah. I couldn't do it. What has been the best part about wedding planning? Cake tasting or something else? It's weird because when you don't have a schedule where you have a life outside of work, uh, you don't get to do things like cake tasting. And I got to look at pictures and go, oh, that one's so pretty. I like that one. Oh, these flowers are beautiful. I don't know what any of them smell like, but let's do the orange ones. Yeah. So it's it's sort of like, you know, wedding planning by design here. Like they go, here are your three options. And I go, oh, I like the middle one. Yeah. Um, but I wouldn't have it any other way because I love what I get to do. And, um, you know, nothing matters except for the day that I get to marry Brian. So... That's awesome. That's so cute. <laughs> um, so taking it back to Switch to Birth, you have a very interesting story for how you came to get this job. You were eating like ramen noodles, went back home to Texas, and then moved back out here. So tell us about that. Yeah, I, I gave it all up. Um, I said, LA is the worst. And then I went to Texas and went, oh, this is so much worse. <laughs> Um, I came back to LA and um, actually my fiance was my agent at the time. The role for Daphne came up and, um, you know, he was like, you got to do this. You, you, you got to get it. And the rest is history, I guess. So um, he, he got me the job. How very Hollywood of me. Yeah. <laughs> it's already supporting you. I know. Yeah. So it's been, it's been really fun and we've been at it for, um, you know, the show's been on for like Three and a half years now. Yeah. It's amazing how time flies. <laughs> um, so one of the things that you are most touted for is your accent on the show. Um, but one of the things that I think is amazing is that even though your character is um, hearing impaired on the show, um, it's not about that. It's about like the issues that she goes through. So why do you think that that's important to showcase? Oh, I think that Daphne is relatable as a character because she goes through the exact same stuff that every teenage girl does boys and school and parents and in finding independence and um you know in senior year and in this season um especially it's it's becoming a woman and becoming the person who you're going to be for the rest of your life and um you know my, my character has always been very straight laced by the books um, this season, that is not the case. This season, um, halfway through the season, there's a very traumatic event happens. And Daphne's reaction to it is is almost sad. Like, she really kind of spirals and goes to this really dark place and explores what that is like. So for me, as an actor, to play that role has been really fun and really different and especially within the parameters of Switched at Birth. Um, ABC Family is really good about showing consequences. So um, I don't know what's going to happen at the end of this season, but um, it's, uh, it's a very big departure from the Daphne that we saw in season one. Has that been challenging for you at all to kind of, you know, take a more dramatic role? I wouldn't say challenging. I would say fun. Okay. Yeah. I think it's, it's really cool to, um, you know, Lizzie, the creator of our show gave me the freedom to say like, this is where we're going with your character. Like, y you know, and, and there was, there was no secrets about, you know, that there was going to be consequences and Daphne just, uh, Daphne made choices like we all do. What can we get excited for the rest of the season? Well, for me, it's, um, it's what happens halfway through the season and it's not necessarily something that I was excited about, but it definitely propels the story in a direction that I think viewers will not see coming. 
Although now they will because I've done this interview. <laughs> They're all prepared for it. <laughs> you're welcome, guys. <laughs> um, so one of the other things I want to talk about, if you're comfortable with um, Meniere's disease, um, I know that you have just this has been an amazing platform to, you know, help other people understand it. And there are so many celebrities out there like Heather Locklear. Um, who else has it? Ryan Adams. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of people out there. They say something like 3 million Americans have Meniere's disease, but like 1.2 are diagnosed with it because people don't understand what it is. And even to this day, people go, man, I'm just, I just get so dizzy when I stand up. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, and I get this ring. Oh, really? Have you ever been tested? And people look at me like, I didn't even know that was a thing. So it's, it's amazing to, like you said, have this platform to be able to spread awareness and talk about you're not a weirdo when you get a head brush because you stood up. You're just, like, normal. Or maybe I'm a weirdo and we're weirdos together. But either way, we're not alone. Um, <laughs> And, you know, unfortunately, there's not great treatment for it out there right now. The best thing that you can do is go on a low-sodium diet and maybe take diuretics. And that's pretty much what they got. But um, I think just knowing that you're not a freak and that you're not alone, yeah. for me, it goes a long way in going, you know, somebody else gets it. Yeah, I think it's cool, you know, how much you've talked about it and have helped share um, or helped other people, you know, understand that it's like, okay to it's okay yeah it's totally okay and it sucks it totally sucks when it's happening it well, is you've had challenges on set right absolutely yeah there's been you know we shot a scene less than two weeks ago where i was on a ferris wheel and i look at the writers and i go seriously you guys are we kidding with this right now but we're gonna do the scene where the ferris wheel's doing this and like just try not to puke and and we'll just cut around it if you do like literally that was the conversation so you you know Every, everybody has challenges with their jobs. Mine happens to be that I don't like rides. <laughs> it's really not so bad, though. You know, I think if you, if you approach everything with a, a positivity and you're always trying to find the silver lining, you know, it, I wouldn't be able to be Daphne without that. Um, last couple questions. This season, um, we saw in the last episode, and it happens through the rest of the season, really tackles the issue of cyberbullying. Why do you think that that's important? It's hugely important. Um, I think that kids are... <laughs> awful kids are mean to each other over the internet and it's because there's no face-to-face -face con contact mm -hmm. and I think that it's a lot easier to be mean behind a keyboard than it is when you have to look somebody in the eyes um it's it's a huge problem and um I, yeah I'm I'm really grateful to be a part of a show that isn't isn't willing to shy away from hard subjects um, so last question, why do you think that people should tune into the rest of the season? <laughs> because we're awesome. <laughs> and, uh, well, I kind of teased on it earlier, but really this season is a huge developing season for both Bay and for Daphne, especially. Um, but it's, it's, uh, we kind of up the stakes a little bit this season. It's, it's one to watch for sure. Cool. Well, we are looking forward to it. Thank you so much for talking to us. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, click like, subscribe to our channel, and leave us a comment letting us know what your favorite episode of Switched at Birth was this season.